Hello and welcome to the Inspiring Inkin Facebook page and Inspiring Inkin YouTube channel. I'm Amanda Fowler and it's time for this week's Craft and Chat Tuesday at two o'clock UK time is where you'll find me live apart from next week um, and I'm going to be away. So just, just so you can put a, a note in your diary, so the 29th of August um i won't be here but i'll be back the following week so if you're here and watching live can you do me a light and sound check and if you're watching on the replay thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do that uh 20 minutes or so of chatting and then we're going to get uh crafting um i am doing a card using cheerful daisies today um inspired by another demonstrator i'll show you their card um so yeah so we've got lots of lots of, of fun fun things to do hello michelle and Scylla and beverly so beverly you're saying good morning which means you are somewhere else in the world <laughs> <laughs> not in the UK. Um, let me, do let me know where you're from. Thank you very much, Antriana. Um, all good. Ali, hello, hello, hello. Good to see you too. And ah, Beverly's in the USA. I am flying to Las Vegas tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a little bit excited. Um, oh, Paul. Paul is here. And uh, he is in a really hot 36 degrees in Italy. Yeah, Vegas apparently is going to be 40 degrees whilst I'm there next this week. <laughs> Thank goodness for air conditioning. Um, I have to say, though, I do like that kind of temperature. Uh, mid 30s up to kind of up to 40, 41 and I'm about melting. Um but yeah, I do, I do like the warm. So long as there's some shade and some air con to disappear into and plenty of cold drinks, obviously. Chris and Angela are here. Sunny in Newbury. Margaret's here. <gasps> Antriana's preparing for an interview. Awesome. Um, that's very cool. That's very cool. <gasps> Oh, 115 here, Beverly. That sounds really, really, really hot. Um, we we do talk about this often because there's a way of converting from Fahrenheit to centigrade. Um, but 115, that sounds really hot. Hello, Karen. Hello, Jan. Oh, Paul's saying it's the humidity that's awful. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be very much humidity in Vegas. I think it's going to be dry. It's desert, so hopefully it will be okay so since, <laughs> since we're talking and i'm kind of obsessed at the moment about the fact that i'm going away um first long haul flight for ages actually i'm just trying to think when did i last do a long haul um pre-pandemic i guess that's a long time ago so what I thought we could do, actually, because I know a lot of people have been away already and some people are um, going away sort of as we go into the latter part of the year. Top tips for traveling. So um, what what are your must haves? What do you have to take with you wherever you go? Um, you know, hints and tips, all that kind of stuff. Um, I've been chatting, <laughs> chatting to some of uh, my friends who I'm traveling with tomorrow. And it was actually only when I looked at the flight time and when we're actually going to land, I realized that, sorry, there was, hmm, that might have been the knock on the door. I might have to go. Um, I'm waiting for the UPS man. No surprise there. He always comes on a Tuesday. I don't know why. Bear with me a second. Mm. 
No, it was clearly the neighbours. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I hadn't actually, I hadn't actually done the maths, which means that we're actually going to be landing, because we're going tomorrow afternoon, we're actually going to be landing at like 3 a.m. UK time. Now, I've done enough long distance, long haul flights to know that obviously you, you need to stay up. You need to be that basically the second I get on the plane, I work on my destination time frame. So whatever time it is at the destination, that's, you know, the way that I, I work, which is one of the great ways of minimizing jet lag. But I'm not entirely sure me being up for nearly 24 hours is going to help. Because <laughs> I'll be up at six tomorrow. So by the time we get to our hotel, because customs in the US is never that easy. Um, so, yeah. So top tips. So let's see. Um, and... I'll just catch up with the, the messages that are coming through and then I'll share you share some of mine. Good evening, Donna. Oz is in the house. Anne is doing a mountain of ironing whilst watching. Anne, why? <laughs> why ironing? No. Yeah, I am absolutely not a fan of ironing. Donna's saying plenty of clean undies. Yes, medications. And Triana always takes her cup and a towel. Uh, Chris is saying do check the issue date of your passport. And she always takes some crafting with her. Good morning, Rose. Illinois, USA is here as well. Um, yeah, so... Um, so following on from a few of those comments, so um, many years ago, many, many years ago, um, I was a volunteer for Girl Guiding UK um, and I worked for the head office and one of, one of the things that I did was arrange, train and support young women who were going to do work overseas. Um, so I have quite a lot of travel horror stories <laughs> to to base my skills on my traveling skills. Um, you know, one of one of our groups, as they as they landed, um, they they landed in a in it was like a stop off point. They they needed to refuel. And some people were actually getting off the plane at that point, and they watched as all their luggage was removed from the plane, and then their plane took off again. And they knew that their luggage was in whatever city <laughs> they'd just left. Um, so traveling anywhere, I always carry a set, a full set, full change of clothes in my hand luggage. And that actually doesn't matter whether I'm doing a short haul flight, you know, a two, three hour flight um, or I'm doing like a long haul flight to Vegas. I always have my toothbrush <laughs> or a toothbrush um, and a full change of clothes. Pretty much wherever you go in the world these days, there are shops. So, you know, you can <laughs> you can go shopping and you can find clothes, but there is nothing worse than having been on a long haul flight, having to shower and then put dirty clothes on again. It's rubbish. So at least then if your luggage doesn't arrive, you've got something clean to put on. So that's one of my top tips. My other top tip is anti-back wipes. And it's something I've done, I've done for years and years. And believe you me, People look at me funny, but you know, um, I use anti back wipes on the armrests, the tray, the seat belt, basically anything, the buttons above my head where the lights and things are, all of them. 
And so I, I do all of that. And the other thing that I never use, because <laughs> I was told by an air hostess <laughs> never to use it, is the pocket. So that you know there's a pocket on the seat in front of you. Um, they don't really get cleaned. You know, the cleaners come in and they they kind of grab rubbish and stuff, but they don't really get cleaned. So I don't put anything in there. Um, I put, uh, I have stuff in a bag and I stick it under the seat. Um, so I don't use the pocket germs. Um, yeah. And, you know, whenever I, <laughs> whenever I'm cleaning and the people around me are all giving me, you know, weird looks. And then I show them, <laughs> I flip my hand over and show them the colour of the anti-back wipe and say, would you like some? And they go, oh, yes, please. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then the other thing is I always, always, always take a refillable water bottle with me. Um, flying, 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 flying is dehydrating. Um, and you need to get as much fluid in as you can. So Donna's saying medications, absolutely. And don't put your medications in your um, hold luggage. If your hold luggage doesn't come, you are stuffed. So always make sure that you're carrying your medications in your hand luggage. And Triana's saying her cup and towel. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I when I'm traveling in the UK I take my mug with me. <laughs> um I don't tend to when I'm on a long haul flight though. Good afternoon Sue. Sue, I emailed you yesterday I think. Um when you get a chance if you can reply I'm not going to be able to do anything about it till I get back anyway. Um, but just to let you know, I have sent an email. And Triana says coffee sachets. Um, so what about that? Tea, coffee. Um, a friend the other day says she always takes a travel kettle with her. Because a lot of hotel rooms these days don't have kettles. And I think actually it's a European thing. So, so my Aussie and North American friends that are here, when you go to a hotel, is there normally a kettle? Because here in the UK, it's very rare you don't get a kettle in your room. So you can make tea or coffee. Cherry is here. Sherry or cherry? Um, let me know. With a, yeah, sherry or cherry hmm. uh indiana thank you in the usa right and karen that's a really good point karen's saying medication in your hand luggage also enough for longer than your stay absolutely if you are away for seven days and you take seven days worth of meds and your flight is delayed or the person that you're traveling with I don't know, breaks their leg and has to stay in hospital for a couple of days, you're going to be out of your medication. So I usually take like double of, of however long I'm going to be. Um, and along with, tra with medication, please, 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 please always have travel insurance. Um, and I know it's I know it's expensive, um, but please do get travel insurance. Over the years, I've had to help get all kinds of people for all kinds of reasons repatriated into the UK because of medical emergencies. And having good travel insurance is is absolutely vital to that process. Kathy Jean's here. Hello, hello. Alberta Canada is in the house. Yeah, Elizabeth says she also has wipes with her and cleans her area on the plane. Siray. Rose is here. 
Oh, Andriana's saying she carries wipes. Now Auntie back if she uses a... Oh, an airport toilet. She had an awful experience, so never again. Actually, here's another. Here's another thing. So in the late 90s, so this is this is going back 30 odd years. I flew Alitalia to Thailand. It was the worst flight I have ever been on. Um, we had horrendous turbulence and people were sick as dogs. It was just, it was hideous. Um, yeah, I, I just, oh, yeah, it was, it was really bad. But on that flight and on many long haul flights, the amount of people I see walking around in just their socks and going to the loo in just their socks. That's not a good idea either. So um, I do take my shoes off when I'm on the plane. A lot of people say you shouldn't do that. I do, but then I have kind of flip-flop slider things that I put on my feet when I'm walking about. Um, oh, <laughs> Antriana says, just to be clean, it was the sinks that were awful. Okay. So Donna saying in Oz, nearly always a kettle and a toaster in your room. We don't have toasters. A toaster? How exciting. Ah, so Sherry's saying um, automatic coffee makers that can make teas, cocos, etc. in most lodges. Awesome. And a coffee pot in the room, Rose says, usually depends on the type of hotel. Okay. I need to find the right sort of hotels to have a kettle in. Oh, so Sue was saying, um, our trip to Australia always had a kettle. In all the motels, there was a microwave, toaster and fridge. It was brilliant. Ah, <laughs> there's, a, there's another top tip that I gave Sue the other day. Sue took her glasses prescription with, with her. Again, that is another really important thing. So I have hmm, one pair of glasses. I actually have sunglasses that are prescription as well. But make sure, even if you've got it on your phone, you know, I take a picture of my glasses prescription because should you happen to smash your glasses, it's actually then tricky to get some replacements. Donna says, you must always wear something other than socks. <laughs> Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Okay, um, what else? Uh, snacks. Always, always snacks. Now, I drink peppermint tea. So I drink I drink coffee in the morning. I drink peppermint tea sort of from lunchtime onwards. So I always travel with a pack of peppermint tea. Um, and in fact, I've got like a little a cute tin um, that I have like four tea bags in. That I keep in my handbag um, for when we're out and about. Um, so, yeah. So then I can just ask for hot water because... A lot of places are getting better now with things like peppermint tea, but quite often they have like, I don't know, three mint tea or green tea or the herbal teas that smell amazing and taste of nothing. So I just drink peppermint tea. Oh, Karen saying travel in dark clothing. So I have a tale about that too. Um, yeah, I I wear it. <laughs> you may have noticed I wear a lot of blue. <laughs> blue is my favourite colour. Um, so I always travel in like navy trousers, but I always travel in a patterned top as opposed to a single colour top, mainly because if you're going to throw something down you, then it's less likely to see, less likely to, to notice. Um, but the last time I flew to Thailand, not the Air Italia one, the about 
four or five years ago. Um, I had horrific nosebleeds um, or a horrific no nosebleed. And actually, about four days later, I had another one. But it was on the flight. So it's like a 17 hour flight or we're about six hours in and I have a nosebleed. Um, it took about an hour and a half for us to get it to stop. But obviously in that time I was covered and I was wearing white trousers. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to wear white trousers um, on a flight in the first place. Um, but needless to say, I was given the once over at customs and the taxi man and even the hotel when we arrived. Um, but thank goodness for <laughs> Thai hotel laundries. They actually got the blood out of the trousers. Um, but yeah, it was that was that was not a good experience. Um, yeah, so that's good. Oh, long distance flights, compression hose. Yeah, compression stockings or socks for people. Lots of people's legs swell up. Um, that's the that's my other top tip, really, is getting up every half three quarters of an hour and walking the length of the plane and I do squats and I wiggle and move myself about a lot um on the flight so Sue has the same problem getting decaf tea she always takes hers yeah Joanne says that was scary it was because <laughs> because we just couldn't get couldn't get it to stop um so yeah, that was that. It, it was not great. I mean, the, the air hostesses were were really good. They actually moved us to the to um, Brian and I to the back of the plane, so that they could just keep handing out towels and <laughs> and water and ice and and yeah, it was it was bizarre. It was bizarre. Um, yeah, clearly flights to Thailand are obviously. <laughs> are obviously not likely to be good as far as as far as I'm concerned so keep coming any other hints and tips of things that you must always take with you when you go away um or you know yeah top tips for traveling um when I'm on a long haul flight I don't tend to bother on short haul flights but on a long haul flight I have a pair of over ear headphones that are noise cancelling and it just means I can actually get a bit of sleep because planes are just so noisy um but yeah I'm I'm looking forward hopefully to getting to watch a couple of movies actually on the plane um but I've got a mountain of books on my kindle so I may well just sit and read phone charger yes absolutely Donna so in my hand luggage, I take all my chargers. So I have a battery and like an external battery for my phone that's fully charged. I have cables for all my electronics, including UK chargers and the country that I'm going to, the, the plugs because I've got delayed on both sides. So I've got delayed um, in the UK and potentially going to run out of battery or then got delayed sort of on the way back. So, so there we go. Ah, a mini sewing kit, says Elizabeth, and a first aid kit. Yeah, so <laughs> interestingly, in my first aid kit, so I've got a little first aid kit like that, that's just kind of got the, the basics in it, including things like Imodium, um, which for long-term use isn't great, but for short-term to get you through um, is, is, a, is a, you know, a useful thing. Obviously, things like plasters and, and um pain medication, sore throat 
tablets or spray as well. And in there, I've got this little tiny sewing kit that, that was like um, a giveaway in a hotel. You know, it's like on a little white piece of card with like three or four different threads on it. Um, so I take that. Um, Sherry's saying a book. And I'm trying to say mosquito repellent, battery pack, first aid kit, steroid cream is brilliant for prickly heat. Yeah, so I, um, I, <laughs> I'm very tasty as far as mosquitoes and horse flies and any kind of biting bug is concerned. So I always have steroid cream um, for those because I react and it's nasty. Yeah, so Donna, that and Donna, that is exactly what we did. Um, and it still took forever. Um, so for nosebleeds, wrap some ice in a tea towel and you put it on the back of your neck and your forehead. <laughs> and I also had some here <laughs> as well um, to try and contract the blood vessels. Earplugs. Yes, Elizabeth. Absolutely. Earplugs. Um, yeah, they're really important. OK, right. <laughs> so. Um, just in case you weren't here at the beginning, um, there is no craft and chat next week. I will be somewhere on across the Atlantic. Um, there will on my blog and Facebook on the email, there, there will be an email going out at two o'clock, um, with, um, a cute project for you to see. Um, but then I'll be back the following Tuesday. If you have any bonus days coupons that you earned in July, so if you placed an order in July, you will have earned bonus days coupons. You need to spend them before the end of August, so you need to spend them in the next week. If you can't find them, email me and I'll speak to our support team and they will send you a copy of the coupons. The, the coupons will have arrived in an email the day you placed your order. So a few people who haven't been able to find them, it was basically because they haven't gone far enough back. Um, so if you just go into your emails from the beginning of July and just work forward, you should find them. But if you don't, let me know. Um, I, I tend to, although my out of office is on, I tend to pick up my emails once a day and just check if there's anything that's desperately important. And obviously, you getting your code before the end of August is important. Um, so let me know and uh, we'll get it. We'll get that sorted out for you. Um, I emailed out and thank you so much. I've been getting so many bookings. It's it's really exciting. Um, I've sent out all of the emails about the Christmas retreat, the, yeah, so the, the online Christmas retreat, the online Stamper Stack, the online Extreme Christmas uh, cards. I've then got two evening Christmas card sessions and a Stamper Stack and an Extreme Cards in person as well. So lots and lots of um, events that you can sign up for. Um, and thank you for everybody that's been signing up already. There are quite tight deadlines. A lot of the classes, the deadline for booking is the 10th of September. So do double check um, when you're booking. Um, or do double check if you want to book for something, when is its deadline? Don't miss the deadline um, because I have to get all the products ordered and cut up and prepared and so on and shipped out or to run the class. And just to clarify, there have been a few questions. Um, my in-person card class, which is on a Tuesday morning, we will be doing Christmas cards in September, October and November. Um, those cards will be different to the evening class and the two evening classes, they will be different as well. So pretty much any of the classes that you come to will be different. But for those of you doing the Christmas retreat, 
don't sign up for the online stamper stack or the online extreme Christmas card class. They are already included in your Christmas retreat. OK, so if you're doing the Christmas retreat, you don't need to sign up for any of the other online classes because you're getting them already. Um, and as people if people are booking and things and I'm noticing that they've booked too many things, obviously, I'll be giving you refunds. So just once you figure out which bits it is that you want to do. OK, I hope that all makes sense. So um, I've got a fun fold for you today. Um, now, this was a card that I received from uh, Norway. It's from Cel Celine Legier. And let me just show you. So this is the this is the card. It's using cheerful daisies and it's got a flap up bit. Oh, I don't know why it's. Hang on. Let me just. There we go. Come on, be focus. Yeah, there we go. And then it opens as well like this. Okay. So I thought I'd do my variation of this, this card. Um, but thank you, Celine, for the swap. So I'm going to turn the camera around and just run through with you some of the products da, da, da. okay so let me just show you so celine has used the cheerful daisies stamp and dies and then this is the fern background um embossing folder and she's stamped now i don't know whether you do this but i was convinced i had the stamps but i don't have the stamps <laughs> i don't know i yeah i don't know oh i do have the stamps <gasps> i used them the other day okay so normally when I teach my classes, I unpack everything like the following morning. And because I've been so busy this past week, I taught a class last week and didn't unpack. So I do have the stamps. But anyway, <laughs> oh no. Um, I'm going to use, instead of the stamps, what I'm actually going to use is the dies. So you'll see Celine's card and my card just using dies. Yeah, thank you, Sue. Yeah, I use them on the tile card. Do you know, I was, convi I, I was convinced and I went through all of my boxes downstairs, but just behind me is the box from Thursday. So I taught a class on Thursday. So there you go. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to show you this, my version of this. Um, but so Cheerful Daisies are on page 110 and 111. I want to show you the papers. I have shown you these papers before, but seriously, you need to see these again. Um, this is the paper that I'm using today with blue and so all of the backgrounds for these are like a watercolor wash they are really pretty i love this That's so gorgeous isn't it and then you've got like a brown more daisies and a mustard yellow Uh, that's upside down. I love the grey there as well. Then you've got this, which is designed for you to cut out sections, which is really, really pretty. And then Moody Mauve on the back. 
And then the last one, this is, this is my favourite of the backgrounds. And then I've got that one. Okay. So that's the papers. So I'm going to show you what um, I'm using. So on the background, I'm using exposed brick. Let me just show you. This is what it looks like. So you've got um, like rendering that's broken off and then bits of brick. I thought that would look really, really cute. And I'm going with garden green and this this colour. I'm going to give you all the measurements again in a minute. Obviously, because I thought I didn't have the stamps. <laughs> I know that I have. Um, I am using the dies. Now, several of the dies work with the, the stamps. So that's how Celine's cut these out. So um, you do the stamped image and then you die cut it. But quite a lot of the dies, like this one, are standalone. So, um, so for instance, that is um, one of the dies that would cut out the stamped image. But then you've got things like this, which you can layer on top of. So you, it will give you lots of dimension. Um, I've cut out the sort of fern leaves out of garden green. Ooh. So I've got three of those, the same as Celine. Um, there's also, you can see there, there's like a little tag and stems and leaves and all sorts. Um, but one of the other things is this piece. I'll turn it over, you'll be able to see. So this is a really great standalone piece. And you can see from here that the flowers are all stuck together. So I'm actually going to use these two flowers because, as I said, <laughs> I didn't think I had the stamps. So um, I'm going to use these and layer them on top of uh, the white pieces. Okay. So... I'm going to get everything out of my little basket and hopefully we can get cracking. So I'm just going to put that away. As I use things, I'll kind of put them away. So I'm going to leave Celine's card there. So um, obviously I've looked at the measurements and so on of, of Celine's card. Um, but, oh, that is definitely the UPS man. I'll be back in one second. That was a quick run down the stairs. Right. Okay. Um, so what I've decided to do is just change the measurements a little bit. And I'm going to put this panel on the center. So um, here we go. So what have I got? I've got a standard card blank. Now, obviously, uh, make your card blank the size um, that works for where you live. But this is my standard size. So it's eight inches by five and three quarter inches. And I've scored it at four. And then in order to make the card, we're going to cut diagonally from the score line to this bottom section. I've got the embossed piece for inside. So that is five and a half by three and three quarters. And then this piece here, 
is eight inches by two and three quarter inches and it's scored at four and then the layers for this are three and three quarters by two and a half okay so and then obviously i've got all the die cut pieces and um various other bits so what i'm going to do is make the two sort of card pieces make sure i've got those cut so that one can just be stuck down And then this piece has to be cut. So I need to get the trimmer. And I'm cutting from the score line to the bottom right hand corner. So just, <coughs> excuse me, just line up in the track the score line to that point. And cut down now obviously you can use this on another piece of card but that gives you your front piece and then the same with this piece you're going to cut from the top right no top left to the bottom right and then that is going to stick down there Okay, and this is a very straightforward card, but it does look very fancy. Um, that's why we call them fun folds or fancy folds. And it, it just means that it just gives you a little bit of, of, of variety in your card making, which is very cool. Okay, so there we go. So that's the, the card front the main bit of the card. So now we've got this piece. So if we look at Celine's card, she has uh, put some color around the edge, which I've got a blending brush and some lemon lolly ink. She's then stamped with some little, little dots. Now, because I couldn't find the cheerful daisies, I'm actually going to use colour and contour. And I've got these little dots here. And actually, this stamp set would work really well with the daisy, the daisy paper. Yeah, so if you have that, you might want to, to use that. Um, and then she's got the, the two flowers, which I'm going to do, and the leaves. So, and she hasn't actually stamped anything in the inside. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to do a bit of the uh, blending around the edge as well, or maybe just along the bottom. So let's pull this up. Hi, Sherry. Right, so I've got a little bit of ink on there. I'm taking a bit off because I don't want too much. And when you're blending, go from the outside in and start on the uh, paper or so the grid paper or the patterned paper or, you know, your scrap paper. Start on there and bring it in towards the middle. That way you won't get any harsh lines. And the harder you press, the darker it will it will be. There we go. So can you see that? And then I'm just going to do it, like I said, just on the bottom. And I haven't re-inked this at all, just along the bottom there for the inside. I'm going to use my splats and just put, I don't know how well the camera's going, yellow, yellow never shows up that well. 
Um, you might be able to see better. <sighs> Uh, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced you'll be able to see. We bring it up really close and then bring it down a bit. Maybe you can you can see. Right, we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so these two can be stuck down. So that's for the inside. Um, and this is lemon lolly ink and I let me move that there so you can see um, and I have talked about this before but I've been asking stamping up as many of you have I think um, to get a lovely citrus lemony yellow and we have got one this is really beautiful okay so now I'm going to bring in this this card I am going to layer up my die cut pieces and then add my sentiment so I'm just snipping off the bits that I don't need And there are lots of tiny, tiny pieces that need poking out here. This take your pick tool is awesome. Um, we have got um, some new adapters for it, including there's there's like a knife and various other things. So I will, it's on my list of things um, to show you if you would be interested in that. I know lots of you have this. It's just so easy just to be able to have one tool and then just be able to swap the, the ends about. So here we go. So I'm going to layer these up. Um, let's just figure out which way they go. Da, da, da. It's upside down. Um, all right, I think what I'm going to do is just bend up my petals a bit. And then I'm just going to put glue around the center so that it sticks there, but it stays with movement over the rest of it. So let's there we go. And then get my dimensionals out. Ew. That's a completely blank sheet. <laughs> Here we go. Welcome back, Chris and Angela. They've been busy dealing with a with a, an important phone call. Now, what you can do if you want to, which perhaps I should have done earlier. Hang on. is put a little bit of shading on the petals so 
Can you <laughs> can you see what I've done? I've just kind of hooked it over the um, grid paper, and it will. I can just get in there and just add a little bit more colour to those petals. Hopefully the, um, the camera will be able to pick that up so it's lighter in the centre. So that's all one. And then we've got that one as well. So let's just. You'll probably be able to see easier with this one because there's more cardstock to kind of see. So obviously, it would be better if you did it before you stuck it down. <laughs> but you know, needs must sometimes. But you've got you've got much paler here in the centre. Okay, so let's lift that bit up. Then I'm just going to put a little bit of, of Tombow on the leaves. And again, I'm following, I'm following this original uh, design pattern by Celine. Um, She's only used a smaller amount here. So I'll do the same. And I've got a little bit there. Lift, lift that up. Squish that in. Now, <laughs> that on its own is a lovely little card. Obviously, um, if you're going to put it in an envelope, the um, you'd need to make a, a bigger envelope. Okay, so then this piece is going to go on the front of the card. Now, Celine's, let me flip this back, is set evenly at the bottom right hand corner that's where she's positioned it so it sits lower down um i've decided with mine that i'm actually going to sit it right smack in the middle um which is why my this piece of card is actually a bit smaller than celine's is, so i could do that so put plenty of glue on because you're sticking it onto an embossed layer And then just make sure it will close, which it does. Now, Karen has suggested putting the paper, the reverse, on this, this side, which, if it was a coordinating colour, would be a great plan. Um, it, it just doesn't, doesn't work um, because, obviously, so to use the same pattern, yeah, yeah, don't work. Well, the shape does, obviously, but the colours don't. There you go. Ooh, is that slightly wonky? I made a card for Brian at the weekend for um, one of his work colleagues that's leaving, and I stuck it down, and it was so wonky. Sorry, that is just not straight. It was so, honestly, it was so wonky. I had to redo part of it. Oh, aha. All right, so that's got to go up a little bit. So just make sure this piece is slightly lower than that fold. So it folds over the top. So we just need to do a sentiment now. Um, I'm going to use some white card. 
I've got my happy birthday, which is from the best family ever. And I'm just going to trim that down and then share with you a little tip that I shared in one of my classes last week, um, which is a really quick way of getting a nice finish on your sentiment so I don't always use punches and dies and things for the sentiments let me just move all this rubbish out of the way sometimes I just do this where I've got a small sentiment um and I I just pop it down but if you cut on an angle your sentiment and then pick up that piece of card and put it over the top of your sentiment and cut it again you will get a matching angle every time And that is one of our favourite things. So let's just move that over a little bit more. I'm just moving the dimensional over so it doesn't stick onto the card so there you go so there is the finished the finished card and obviously this is this is your place to to write and there's Celine's original one So I hope you have enjoyed today's project. Thank you so much for Celine to uh, for sharing the original card with us. Thank you, Ali. Oh, I hope I hope it's a a nice visit to the dentist for you, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. And thank you, Donna. Okay, so um, I, like I said, I won't see you live next week, but I will be here in two weeks' time. Um, the project I'm sharing on Tuesday is new products from the Autumn Winter Catalogue. And the following week is the day before the launch. So I'm going to have lots more products to show you as well then. So take care of yourselves. Don't get up to too much mischief whilst I'm away. <laughs> and um, remember to spend those bonus day codes and get booking on all of my classes and events because that makes me really happy. Um, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Um, but if you need me in the meantime, as always, send me a quick email. Let me... Ooh. There, that's my email address, amanda at inspiringinkin.com. And if you haven't already, please subscribe both on, follow me on Facebook. Um, ooh, there's a point. Follow me on Facebook, um, subscribe on YouTube, um, go to my blog, subscribe there as well. Um, I will be posting from Vegas. And I'll be posting on my Instagram page and my Facebook page. So um, if you want to know what's going on, whilst kind of whilst it's going on, um, then check those out. And then I'll kind of do a roundup on my blog when I get back. Um, but posting on Instagram and Facebook is much, much quicker um, than doing a blog post when I'm away. 
Everything that you've seen today is available in my online store. If you go to www.inspiringinking.com, you'll see a shop now link. Um, and thank you so much. I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye.